Hey folks and welcome to Truck King. Sitting next to me right here is 7,000 pounds worth of concrete and trailer and it is hooked up to an F-150 Lightning. Now we have done zero to 60 testing with that trailer on 21 different trucks, but none of them were all electric. So in this video, we're gonna see if this F-150 Lightning is actually quicker with weight on the back than all of those gas powered trucks. Let's start by looking closer here at the Lightning. So our Platinum, which comes standard with the extended range battery, this is a top trim Lightning. This thing can tow up to 8,500 pounds. If you step down in the trim levels and still get the max tow package, this truck can go up to 10,000 pounds. And now let's check out what the payload is on the door jam sticker. 1,614 pounds, which is a really good payload number. And I want to talk a little bit further about it because the GVWR on this truck, the gross vehicle weight rating is 8,550 pounds, which means technically, if you go by the government's GVWR ratings, this is a class 2B truck, which makes it a 2,500 series truck. This is just an interesting difference with the Lightning because it is so heavy that Ford had to boost the GVWR WR to make sure the payload would be decent. If they didn't do that, if they kept it as a half ton, the payload would have been that much lower. So it doesn't really change anything for a consumer purchasing this truck, but I think it's an interesting spot we're in right now where trucks, when it comes to their payload and GVWR, they're really blurring the lines between all of the different categories. I mentioned it off the top, but again, I just want you guys to look. So these are our concrete blocks that we have on here. 2,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds, 1,000 pounds, and then the trailer itself is about 2,000. So that's where we come up with our 7,000 pounds. Now, this is always the trailer that we tow because we strive for consistency, right? We're always testing these trucks and comparing them. So we use the same trailer to make sure we get that same feeling over and over and over. Now, it's worth pointing out that no, this is not a high-sided box trailer or a trap trailer if we had those you'd be getting that air resistance this trailer doesn't have that so it's really just about the weight it's putting on the trucks and then honestly you might be saying to yourself well who cares about zero to 60 these are trucks and I somewhat agree with you they're not sports cars however if you've ever merged onto a busy highway towing a heavy load you know that that acceleration does matter it really just adds to a more stress-free towing experience so no if you're a second quicker than that truck it's not a big deal but I do think it's important to kind of have this range of times to understand that yeah you can really increase your zero to 60 time by buying a different truck so that's what we've been trying to do and uh, I can't wait to get this lightning out there and see where it slots into the leaderboard Let's take a look underneath the Lightning now. And the first thing I want you to notice is just look how sealed up it is right from front all the way to the back. And this is actually fairly common for electric vehicles because you guessed it, the battery is right in here, sandwiched between the frame rails in the middle of the truck. And Ford doesn't want anything penetrating that battery. They wanna make sure it's well protected and it is. And I can show you with our magnet test, these are all steel skid plates. There's no aluminum or plastic here anywhere. And I think that just also suggests Yes, that Ford really doesn't want anything getting up into that battery pack. So as I come up front here, I'll point out there's no drive shaft here either. There's no connection between front wheels and rear wheels. There's a separate electric motor up here and a separate electric motor back there in the back. Now all the way up front, I like to point out the tow hooks and these are nice ones, nice and accessible. I appreciate having those. Uh, yeah, and then basically the uh, skid plates start right away. There's one kind of piece of material right here. Looks like it's got some uh, air breathers here probably for cooling and then the steel starts and the steel goes all the way to the back here and I'm gonna come back here to point out one other thing which are these massive rear control arms these things are huge 
They are aluminum, so you're saving a bit of weight there, but uh, it's definitely noticeable. And yeah, guys, this is independent rear suspension. Not a lot of trucks get independent rear suspension, basically no trucks, but here on the Lightning, we have that just to help deal with all of the weight of this battery pack a little bit better. Now we're out here towing in the lightning and if you want to hear more about towing in the lightning you should probably go watch our last video where dad and I hooked up a travel trailer to one of these things we did a range test we did a charging test and we really got into kind of all the details especially with sort of the ownership experience on the lightning that's not what this video is about but I just wanted to put it out there if you want to see more of that stuff go check out that video in this video we want to dive into our leaderboard we have now tested 21 different trucks dad over the last what almost three years now yep and, and and that is with the same trailer this exact one on the same road in the same settings uh, and, and that was our idea is over the over time we'll really get a nice body of data to compare so I'm gonna throw up the whole leaderboard here you guys can see all of the numbers and please if you have questions or comments we want to hear them but let's just kind of hit some of the high points that shall we so the first thing I want to point out is that the slowest truck we have ever tested sadly is the Jeep Gladiator Mojave with the manual transmission. And I'm not sure I want to blame the manual, but I think that was part of it. That's a long throw manual. It's not like a little short throws, quick shift kind of thing. Uh, and that truck did a 19 and a half. And it only had 4,000 pounds on it too. So Jeep Gladiator Mojave is, uh, is at the bottom of the list. It's not really a towing truck. It's an off-road truck, but it's, I'm going to blame the manual on it. You, know, you can, but on the other hand, uh, that's not one that you would mention and then people go oh my god i can't believe it's last i mean i didn't expect it to place very high anyway fair enough yeah like i said it's not a towing truck right um so then we've done most of our trucks with seven thousand pounds but we've had a bunch of mid-sizers and with those we'd actually knocked down to five thousand pounds so again you can see the whole list here but i think it's worth discussing dad that the fastest truck or the quickest truck we've ever done with five thousand pounds is the honda ridgeline which yeah. put in a 14.2 yeah. and man the ridgeline takes a lot of crap on the internet a lot of people love to hate on it but it is powerful it tows well it's comfortable it has as VTEC, so you actually do get the advantage over, I think it's 6,000 RPM or something. You really feel that power come on. Um, yeah, man, and, and, and it's beat out the Frontier. It beat out the Tacoma, the kind of the traditional midsize trucks you think of. So, well, I don't know. It, I think go Honda, and I think it reinforces the fact that people love to say it's not a real truck. That's just BS. That's nonsense. However, I remember that run, and the thing that impressed me on it was the all-wheel drive setup sure. in that Honda is taking every ounce of available power and putting it onto the road consistently at all four corners constantly yeah and i think that made the difference uh, yeah i would absolutely agree with you and torque vectoring so if it does feel slip it can correct yeah send the power yeah. down whereas when we're in a tacoma and a frontier we'd normally just stick it into a wheel drive and go for it right? right so it's it's a different experience and the honda of course is all wheel drive only here in canada so as we said, you know, yeah, the rear end, all the gearing is going to make a difference on all of these gas trucks. And let's get into the top three, Dad, because there is actually two hybrids in the top three. So that kind of suggests that electrification does make the difference. Coming in third is actually the Toyota Sequoia Capstone that's got that hybrid max powertrain. That did a 12.1. And you can only imagine that the Tundra with the hybrid max would be almost the exact same. We actually haven't had one up here to do it. But uh, yeah, 12.1 from the Sequoia. And again, just with our experiences in the Tundra, that's a powerful uh, hybrid setup. It is. Yeah, it's not just an assist. No. So then actually tied for second and third place, uh, we have the Ford F-150 Power Boost. That also ran a 12.1 second, exactly the same as the Toyota. And once again, I think we're just reinforcing the fact that getting that instant torque out of those electric motors to get your load up and off the line, it makes a significant difference. In the mid-ranges, yeah, you're probably almost the same, but it's all about getting up and taking off, right? 
and then the quickest truck we have ever tested and the only truck to run a sub 10 seconds is the Ram TRX 700 horsepower monster um, I remember that run I remember being worried that the trailer was gonna pop up because it, it just felt so aggressive and dramatic the way that truck just takes off sounds absolutely incredible um, and, and it's also a pretty big heavy truck so I remember it felt fairly planted and, and stable as well but also you know it's got that off-road suspension so not quite as stiff as this truck too so a, a definite difference I don't know what do you remember about the TRX well I definitely remember that you know it's a dramatic uh, run yeah I mean, it, it's noise. It's it's gears screaming. It's yeah, it's the tires shifts. spinning. Yeah. It's the shifts. It's you know everything about it is uh, it's just so old school motor assist. Away we go, <laughs> you know. Hell for leather. Hang on to the horses. You know, it was awesome. Yeah. On the other hand, this thing, you know, when we did it today, it's like man, it's just quiet. It's controlled. It's planted. It's like. In some ways it's it's uh, it's maybe not dramatic enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is fair and uh, yeah I mean with that uh, with that said why don't we cut over to our zero to 60 run now and you guys can see how the lightning does okay folks now it's time for the moment of truth the exciting moment we're doing zero to 60 with our 7,000 pounds. Now we've got it in tow haul mode. That is almost always what we run the trucks in. And uh, yeah, dad, I can't wait to see what happens. Now, I will also point this out. Before, we always used an app, a zero to 60 app that I had on my phone. And quite frankly, lately it's been very unreliable. Um, so we're just using a stopwatch. We're going old school and I'm timing it. That seems to be the best way we can get these times. When we used to run these, and then when I say used to, it was only last year and the year before. Yeah. The, the app always worked. And these days it doesn't seem to be quite as good. So we're, uh, we're going old school with the stopwatch. And we'll see how it pans out well that'll work and remember the mark we're looking to beat nine and a half seconds set by the ram trx okay quit talking you ready i'm ready okay three two one go a little rubber off the line that's strong 100 oh <laughs> I got that as a 969, which makes it 0.1, a hundredth of a second slower than the Ram TRX. But we did, we spun off the line. So do we take it again and maybe lock the diff and see if that yeah. helps us? Yeah, let's do it one more time and let's lock up the diff. Cause it, I, if we didn't have that little spin, that might've made the diff. And it does feel unbelievable. And of course it's the polar opposite of the Ram. The Ram did it and that was a very drama filled experience. It's loud and you're hearing things and things are going oh, well, and crazy. it was squirrely. It yeah. was it was it was turning the wheels and Whereas it was getting it was getting out of shape. This and EV power, all-wheel drive all the time. It's just unbelievable how smooth and quiet that experience is pulling to, to 100 km. Th this an is hour. something that I mean, okay, I'm old, so listen, I grew up with torque curves and it's it's weird for me to think that I gotta I gotta rethink everything because now it's like I put that accelerator on the ground and all the torque was there right away. Yeah. Boom. It's really wild. So 969 is what we got on our first run, but we got to take one more run just to see if we can't shave a little bit off. And we have done that in other trucks too, I will say. If we feel like we can get a little more out of the truck, we always go back and, and try again. Yeah, particularly and, and on if we... you actually, maybe it's just about feathering off the line and not jamming the accelerator trying to tell me how to jam I'm, I'm just saying it could help you know oh. rather than going right to the floor how many mosquitoes did you let in here today? <laughs> a couple apparently okay well let's uh let's try her again let's get lined up here did you mm -hmm. lock the diff uh diff is locked okay three two one go still got a little bit of a squeak out of her yeah a little less 100! Oh, you know what? That's nice and consistent. That was a 966. 
So that, that means, yeah, 9.6 is what you can expect out of this truck. So gosh darn it, the EV was almost as quick as the TRX, but that the, Rams, sucked, eh? the Ram stays on top. Wow. I mean, now, 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 you know, you finally got something that you can pin compare to that you understand. Yeah. Somebody goes, well, how fast is that lightning? And you say, well, the Truck King guys did it and it ran as quick as a 700 horsepower <laughs> TRX. TRX. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And now that we have our new number, let me throw up the updated leaderboard for you guys right now. Well, folks, there you have it. I will tell you, I thought the Lightning was going to be on top, so it's pretty crazy that the TRX keeps the title, but uh, yeah, the Lightning was right there with it. So I mean, what we've proven is, is sort of some of the things we've already said before with this truck. It's an incredible towing truck. The actual product, the way it pulls the trailer, the way it puts its power to the ground, it's, it's really good. The issues with the Lightning still have to do with just the charging infrastructure. Public charging infrastructure is not good. And, and when you buy an electric vehicle today coming out of an internal combustion engine, it is a lifestyle change. There's no better way to say it. It's, it's you know, you're not just popping into the gas station and continuing down the road. This morning, for instance, before this test, I had to go to the fast charger to top up. So it was like, well, I need 25 minutes. Let's go eat breakfast. So my son and I went and got breakfast. Which which is not something I normally do on a work day because I want to get up here as soon as I can to start working, but there's no choice. I yeah. had to sit there for 25 minutes. But now you got to figure that into every one of your time schedules. Precisely. I'm right? going to have to do that same All this thing down at the end of the day. So, so we are not here to say that the EV experience is perfect. Far from it. There's so many things that need to be updated. Um, that bank of chargers that I used, one of those chargers I've never seen work. And then the charger that I use was only delivering like 35 kilowatts, which is less than half of what it should have been and the truck said there was a charger fault so these are the kind of things we're still dealing with that never happens at a gas station yeah when was the last time you had a gas pump fault exactly so so yes like i said we we want to recognize that the product is great but the infrastructure and the larger ownership experience still has a long way to come and and there's a bit of evidence supporting what we're talking about which is that i was just over in the uk you might have seen a video on the ineos grenadier it's here on the channel um well while I was there, they announced a new law specifically to do with EV charging, and it addresses almost all of the pain points we've had. The law says that 90% of the charging bank has to be working, so basically saying like one charger can maybe be down, but that's it. Um, they say that the charger has to clearly tell you how much you are paying per kilowatt. Yeah, because here we don't get that. It's only in time here. You pay, I think the one I used today was 56 cents a minute, something like that. So you pay by time. It's like, but again, at the gas station, I pay per liter, per yeah. gallon. And at home, you get charged by the kilowatt hour, not by time. That too. So that's a strange one. So the UK government stepped in and said no more of that. Um, like I mentioned, they have to be working. And then another really important one they said is you do not need an app on your phone. Thank they wrote you. that right into the law to say the, the, the charging station has to be able to accept other forms of payment right then and there. You don't need your credit card in your phone because once again why wouldn't we just replicate what we have with our gas yeah vehicles? i can pay with cash you exactly. know that's what they're saying which is what i've always been saying if i go to a gas station it's my choice as to how i pay you know and i don't have to download an app i don't have to be subjected to their propaganda and their marketing blitz after the fact once sure. i sign up for that first app they would never stop sending me crap sure. <laughs> i don't want it yeah, no, totally fair. So, like we keep saying, it's early days. This is sort of the way the, the very first implementation of public charging has come out. And now, and sadly, sometimes it does take the government to step in and, and regulate these things to keep the charging companies honest. Because that's the other thing, is there's no consistency between the charging companies. One town, you might have Electrify Canada. One town, you might have Flow. They're two different things. So, uh, with government regulation, hopefully we can level the playing field and uh, make the charging charging experience that much easier because if the public charging and charging in general was easier I would be recommending the lightning to everyone I could <laughs> yeah even the truck agrees <laughs> there we go yeah it said Steve is smart Steve, Steve is smart, smart. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs>
Well, folks, we are coming to the end of this one. Now, I want to mention here that Ford actually just dropped the prices on its Lightning. Here in Canada, some of the prices actually got cut by as much as $15,000. In the States, it's more like six to $9,000. But still, Ford says that because of greater plant capacity and efficiencies, they were able to cut the price. I think it's actually more to do with the fact that the Cybertruck finally just entered production, so Ford wants to make sure they can stay competitive. But here's the really the interesting thing. They cut the prices, but still at the base level, this truck is $10,000 more than what they originally said it was going to sell for. So yes, the Lightning here is incredible and you saw it, it's quick, but it's still not quite as affordable as the majority of gas powered trucks. And I'm really hoping that's something that as we move forward, that price gap comes a lot closer together. So like I said, that's it for this one. Now, of course, I want to hear from you, so please go into the comments. Let me know what you think of our entire leaderboard, this Lightning, the TRX, whatever you guys want to talk about, drop your comment down there and we'll do our best to respond to it. As always, while you are down below, don't forget to hit like, hit that subscribe button, hit the join button to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.